Welcome to another edition of Finish First. I'm Judge Dawson, and keep in mind, I am only here to give you tools and information that you can use to take your life to the next level. It's not enough for me to just be a judge. I wanna change the narrative of justice in this country and beyond. And what's necessary is a judicial system that is trying to help people, and that's what I am here to do. So, with these Finish First workshops, again, they are short and to the point, but they're aimed at giving you tools, not only so that you can be the best that you can be, but you can also avoid this thing that I call the legal matrix. So let's go. All right, I wanna talk about what type of future you want to build. And actually, we did a video, a workshop previously on what do you want to build? And I asked that question and I had you actually think about things that you wanted to do, how you wanted to live your life, what things you were passionate about, just to really just figure out what do you want to build. But that's only the first step. As we continue to dive into this question and dive into this inquiry, now we have to figure out what steps do I have to take to get to the point where I am building a positive future for myself, for my family, or maybe even the world at large. So. Today, I wanna to talk to you about your potential. Your potential. So when we talk about potential, what are we talking about? Basically, we're talking about that untapped resource inside of all of us that can take us to the next level. Or at least it can give us the things that we can achieve beyond what we're achieving right now. So potential, again, is untapped resources and abilities inside of us that we could use to take to the next level. Now, the problem is not many of us realize what our true potential is. And even if we know what our potential is, some of us are purposely and intentionally living underneath or below your potential. So what I wanna suggest through this workshop is that you have the ability to create any life that you want. It's all about tapping into that potential. Here's one example. You know, I was listening to a lecture where they talked about the atom bomb right, or a nuclear explosion. Even if you are not a scientist, we can all acknowledge that we know what a nuclear bomb is and what an atom bomb is. It's something that causes mass destruction because of the power, because of the energy, because of the heat that it generates. But did you know that we also have atoms inside of us? Atoms that created this bomb that can create or cause destruction, those atoms exist in us. Now, they're not to the same extent, don't get me wrong, we don't have a lot of radioactive material going on inside of our bodies, but we do have the ability to use those same atoms, that energy, that power, so that we can go to the next level. So that's one reason why you should never sell yourself short, because you have the power within you to rise above any circumstance. And the key is, you have to believe it. What I've found through these workshops and what I've found through all of my years of being on the bench as a judge is that many of us don't believe in our power, our power to break cycles, our power to be the best that we can be, our power to rise above our current situation. And there could be many reasons why we don't feel that way. Maybe it's because of the life circumstances that we've seen occurring around us. Maybe it's because of what people have spoken into us as early as childhood. So what we have to do in order to tap into your absolute powerful potential is get rid of those manifestations from the past and live for your greatest potential because it's based on what's inside of you. Let's go. So one of the keys to tapping into your potential is having self-belief. And we're gonna talk about that. You know, I have so many tools and resources that I'd like to share with you, but I was reading a book and it said, personal development is the belief that you are worth the effort. Dennis Waitley. Personal development is the belief that you are worth the effort, time, and energy needed to develop yourself. So if you break that statement down, basically you have to believe that you are worth it because any type of development, personal development, so that you can tap into your potential, it requires time and energy. But some of us don't wanna give that time, right? Some of us say, you know what? I don't feel like completing my GED or I don't wanna finish high school. I don't wanna to go to school. But you gotta understand that that is an investment in you tapping into your potential. 
Or say, for instance, you're in some type of arts or sports, but you say, I don't want to practice. I don't want to put in that time and that effort. You will never be able to tap into your greatest potential unless you do the work. You may be born with all types of natural talent, but that doesn't mean you're going to tap into your greatest potential because that requires time, effort, and energy. Let's look at the life of Kobe Bryant. He's an example. Nobody can deny that that man had natural talent on the basketball court. But at the same time, the more you look into his life and his daily habits, he worked on his personal development all the time because he didn't want to just float by with his natural talent. Instead, he wanted to tap into his greatest potential. So keep in mind, you first have to know that in order to be the best that you can be, in order to tap into your greatest potential, you have to put in the time and effort and energy, but first you have to believe that you are even worth it. So why don't we believe? Why don't we put in the time and effort? I submit to you, it is a lack of self-esteem, high value self-esteem. And it's really difficult for us to admit that because everybody wants to be a boss, everybody wants to be in control. But if you look under the surface, you'll find that a lot of people don't have the self-esteem that is necessary for them to be the best that they can be. They don't have the self-esteem that is necessary to say, you know what, I can go back to work or I can get a better job, or I can apply for that new position because it's gonna take time, it's gonna take training and energy, but if you don't have that self-esteem, you won't do it. And let me tell you, I will not blame you for lack of self-esteem. I see the tragedy in my court every single day of people who suffer for lack of self-esteem, but it's not their fault. It's sometimes based on the history, based on the life that they lived, I mentioned earlier, maybe it was in your environment and the people that you hung with. You know, they say that the average child hears no about 50,000 times before they become a young adult, as opposed to hearing yes, maybe 5,000 times. Now my numbers could be skewed a little bit, but you get my point. As a young child, an early age, we are told no so many times. We're told we can't do it so many times that sometimes that shapes your ability to tap into your greatest potential because it lowers your self-esteem. But today we are taking that back. We are taking back the power of our self-esteem and we're gonna rise it to a new level because I am gonna give you tools and techniques that you can use to take your self-esteem to the level that it needs to be so that you can live to your highest potential and build what you wanna build. But before I give you those tools, again, I want you to buy into the fact that having a high value self-esteem is important to you living your best life. Now, again, I've studied all the greats as far as motivational speaking and human development, and some of those quotes are amazing. There's a man named Zig Ziglar. He states, it is impossible to consistently behave in a manner that's inconsistent with how we see ourselves. We can do very few things in a positive way if we feel negative about ourselves. So what that means is basically you can fake it and you can fake it a long time, but there comes a point where you can no longer behave in a way that's inconsistent with how you really feel about yourself. So it's important for us to then build up the way that we feel about ourselves so that we can move and act in a way that's consistent with how we want to be. There's another great quote. There is no factor that's more important in people's psychological development and motivation than the value judgments they make about themselves. How do you feel about yourself? Because that is most important. How do you feel about yourself? Because we can't necessarily control everything that people try to dump on us. All the garbage that people try to dump into your yard, we can't control it all but you can control how you feel about yourself and how you feel about yourself will be your defense mechanism against the feelings and the thoughts and the poison that people will throw into your yard, your mind, your garden, right? So again, that's why it is so important right now that we're gonna step right into these tools and techniques that you can use so that you can be the best that you can be, live to your highest potential and build every single thing that you wanna build in your life. 
All right, let me give you five steps to building your self-confidence. Now, there are many more, but I'm gonna start with five in this segment because I don't wanna give you too much information. I don't wanna give you too much to eat and too much to chew on because we need to really digest these bits of information and these steps so that we can start living with power and stop squandering around in this lifestyle that doesn't feed you and doesn't represent your absolute best self. So step number one, I wrote them down and I want you to write them down too. Guard your self-talk. Guard your self-talk. Think about it. Who do you have the most conversations with in an average day? It's you. You get up in the morning and though you're thinking something, you may be saying, well, judge, I'm not talking to myself. Well, in reality, you are because the thoughts that you are thinking are manifesting themselves as talk and things that you are digesting internally. So before you get up in the morning and start scrolling on Instagram, Facebook, or whatever it is that you listen to, TikTok, I suggest that you talk to yourself in a positive manner. Tell yourself that, you know what? Good morning, William Dawson. You can achieve any goal that you set out to achieve this morning. You are amazing. Forget about the haters. Forget about the doubters. This is your day. Now, that's an example that I rolled right off the top of my head. But what I want you to do right now, I want you to write down a statement, a short statement that you can memorize as self-talk, positive self-talk that you can give yourself every single morning. So do that now. Why is that so important? Because you have to be your biggest encourager. You have to be your biggest cheerleader. We already know, we talk about breaking cycles all the time and one of the elements of being a cycle breaker is having the grit to hang in there when times get hard because we know there are gonna be times when people doubt you. Not only will they doubt you, they will actually dump on you and tell you what you can't do, tell you how bad of a person you are, but that's when you have to say, you know what, okay. Even though I don't accept that, even though I can't control what you're saying, I am going to encourage myself. I am going to be my own biggest cheerleader and encourager. So, ladies and gentlemen, step number one is for you to guard your self-talk. It is so important that you take pride and take strategic steps to make sure that what you're saying to yourself, the thoughts that you're thinking, because they will manifest themselves, make sure they're positive. And that talk that is negative and stuff that feeds doubt into your mind, let it ride past. I mean, some of us can't get it out your mind. I'm not saying you're a magician. But acknowledge that negative thought and let it float on past and go right back to the positive self-talk that you need to be the best you can be. Step number two, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other people. That is an immediate fast way for you to feel depressed, sad, or inadequate. And especially if you think about how we're living now with social media, you turn on social media, it seems like everybody is living their best life. No depression, no sadness, no L's, right? Everybody's winning. But in reality, that can't be the truth because we're all human beings living this experience called life. And there will always be peaks and valleys to life. So though everyone around you is seemingly living their best life, don't fall into that trap. Don't compare yourself to others. Instead, compare yourself to your best self. Compare yourself to who you want to be. Compare yourself to what you want to accomplish because that's the way that you'll move to the next level. So maybe it's a friend that you have and maybe they started a business. Don't be envious of the business. Don't even worry about it because they may have problems in that business, obstacles to overcome that you don't even want to face. Or maybe it's somebody who just got married or just got in a relationship and you're thinking, when am I going to have that same situation? But you don't know what happens behind closed doors. And statistically speaking, not a lot of relationships are perfect. Most of them aren't. They're riddled with domestic violence, with sadness, with money issues and even divorce. And I'm not wishing that on anybody, but I'm just trying to bring you the reality that the things that we honor, the things that we value or put on a pedestal, may not be true. So don't even compare yourself to the life of someone else or what people post that they are. Instead, make sure you're living your best life and compare yourself to what that best life is. You know where you wanna be. So right now, just compare yourself to that next step and stop comparing yourself to other people. 
Number three, move beyond your limiting beliefs. All of us have them. All of us have these self-limiting beliefs. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do a handstand like Judge Dawson, so I don't wanna go to yoga class. Or I'm not good at math, so I'm not gonna continue to study. Believe me, those limiting beliefs, you have to stop believing them and stop feeding into them. It's easy to say, you know what, I can't do it because it takes a little bit more effort to say what you can do. There's a quote again, it's important. When a man has put a limit on what he will do, he has put a limit on what he can do. That's Charles Schwab. He invented a nice platform for investing, made millions of dollars, not only for him, but for other people. Now listen to that quote again. When a man has put a limit on what he will do, he's already put a limit on what he can do. So we have to move beyond our self-limiting beliefs. You have to go into it knowing that, hey, I can accomplish that. And then even if you fall short, at least you've given it 100% effort. At least you walked in halfway ahead of the game because you walked in believing that you can accomplish it. See, a lot of our efforts and a lot of our endeavors really takes a lot of confidence. And when you come with positive confidence, not only will you be able to achieve it, but then you'll bring the resources, people, places, and things will come to you who are willing to help you go to that next level. So maybe you can't do it right now, but if you believe you can with the resources that will come to you based on that attraction, the law of attraction, you'll be knocking it out very soon. So we have to move beyond our own self-limiting beliefs. The fourth step to increasing your self-esteem, which means you are going to increase your potential, which means you're gonna build the life that you want to build is add value to other people. You would be amazed at how good it makes you feel on the inside when you give to other people. And it doesn't have to be that you giving a million dollars to somebody because we can't all do that. I can't do that. But what you can do is give a word of encouragement to somebody that's feeling down. Maybe while you're walking down the street, you see somebody and you can tell on their face that they've suffered some type of loss or maybe they're in a state of depression. Take a moment to say, you know what? It's going to be a brighter day. You've given that person life. You've spoken life into that person. And when you start to add value to other people, believe me, you are adding value to your own life. And I don't want you to do it for a selfish reason, but it's hard to feel bad about yourself when you're doing something good for somebody else. It's like, it's like magic. I mean, really, when you are out doing good, you know, sometimes our foundation, we go out and feed those who need food, you know, the homeless or whatever the case may be, somebody who's down on their luck. And the feeling that we get because we're doing good for somebody else, I'm telling you, it changes all the issues that I have right that moment in my personal life. I could be going through situations at court that I'm not happy with. My relationship could be on the rocks. Maybe I'm worried about my kids. It could be anything. But when you change the focus from yourself and you start adding value to other people, I'm telling you, it will change your life. And then there's another step to adding value. That is when you get something that is important, that has added value to you, share it with somebody else. Just like these videos we're doing. I'm sure that you know somebody in your life who could benefit from hearing something positive. A half an hour of their time to get a little motivation, that's adding value. So maybe you can't give somebody money, but what you can say is, you know what, go to Judge Dawson's website, judgedawson.com, hit that link. You're gonna go to his YouTube page and there is something on that page to help you if you are feeling down. So that's what I mean when I say add value to someone's life. It doesn't have to be financial because we're not all in that position to give money. But maybe you can give your time. Maybe you can give your wisdom. You know something. Because if you're listening to this video right now, that means you have overcome some life circumstance. And if you have done that, that is something that you can give to others that will add value to their life. And when you add value to others, 
Not only are you building your self-esteem, you are building your possibility to create the life that you want to build. All right, number five, our fifth way to build your self-esteem because we know that building self-esteem is gonna build your possibility, your positive possibilities because your life will expand. This is important because I do this workshop. I started because I do programs in courtrooms, right? For people who are on probation sometimes, I send them to my class called Finish First. But once the pandemic started, I had to shift, right? So I started doing these videos. First, I started on Zoom and then I started doing them on YouTube because my goal was for this video to last longer than just the specific occasion because I really wanted to put information here that people can use. And while they're scrolling and doing things that doesn't make much sense and doesn't add much value to their life, I want to be a resource. While I am a judge, I am gonna use every ounce of my energy to be a resource. So with all that being said, initially the program was for people who came through my court. So this last part is very important. Number five is doing the right thing even when it's the hard thing to do. Doing the right thing even when it's the hard thing to do. Sometimes, Walking away from an argument is hard to do, but it's the right thing to do. Sometimes when your friends come to pick you up and you know that they don't have license and they smoke weed and if you get pulled over, there are gonna be issues, telling them, no, nah, I don't wanna hang out today, that may be the hard thing to do, but it is absolutely the right thing to do. See, the bottom line is that the more that we employ our ability to choose what's right, even when it's hard, you're gonna say, you know what? I did that. I made that hard choice. And slowly your confidence will build. Now you may be thinking, Judge Dawson, that's not my problem, that's not my problem. Well, it's not your problem until it is your problem. And what I mean by that is you'd be amazed at how many people are in my courtroom because they were caught up in somebody else's mess. They were in the car when somebody else decided not to pull over for police officers or they went in the store not realizing, or maybe they did, that someone was gonna steal something and now they both have charges. So when you tell me that, you know what, Judge Dawson, I don't get myself involved with situations that I don't control, that's not true. But what I want you to do, walk away from things that are tempting and do the right thing even when it's hard to do. And oftentimes that means cutting off people, situations, and circumstances because it does not serve you and it will not help your self-esteem or help your positive possibilities. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a short one for us today because I've given you five tools that you can use to build your self-esteem, which will build your positive possibilities and your potential will expand. I'm gonna come back with five more, but I'm not gonna give them to you now. You're gonna have to stay tuned. But until we meet again, continue to be the best that you can be and remember to be Cycle Breakers.